Hello you all, welcome to our channel. I'm Shatasia and this is my husband, Apostle Grigsby. All right, so today we'll be coming to you all with a teaching titled Seducing Spirits Part 2. Right, all right. Um, like usual, we're going to really break this thing down. Um, I, I definitely believe this is a series that the Lord has uh, been introduced to the airways to combat against the, um, the works of the enemy. But you no, know, even as Christ came, you know, words say that he was made manifest in the flesh in order to do, with the, do away with the works of the enemy. So uh, that's essentially the purpose of the going forth of the word is to eliminate the effects and the influence of the enemy over uh, the Lord's people so that the commandments may be um, introduced and reintroduced in the earth. Right. So those are some of the things that we're going to tackle today, which is going to definitely make uh, make a major emphasis on seducing spirits, seducing spirits. Um, I did original uh, original series like a week ago and uh, it was dealing with seducing spirits and their uh, influence on gifted gifted individuals such as the servants of the most high or those who were born with a spiritual gift or even a physical talent and how these seducing spirits will attempt to use, use their gift to uh to establish their own goals and ambitions so uh now we're gonna we're gonna deal with this from a more simpler um uh, angle and kind of break down what the seducing spirits are even further so that you as a believer, can recognize them when they make themselves manifest in your life, right? I'm going to open up with a scripture, then we're going to go into prayer, okay? 1 John 4 and 1, 1 John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from Yahweh, because many false prophets have gone out into this world, right? Let me read that one more time. First John 4 and 1, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from Yahweh, because many false prophets have gone out into the world, okay? Most gracious and honorable God, we come to you right now just to say thank you, Father. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us. Thank you for strengthening us in the way. Thank you for perfecting the gift that's on the inside of us. Thank you for giving us a spiritual override of all things again, to combat against those issues that dwell within our hearts, that seek to oppose the vision and the dreams that you have given unto us to fulfill the purpose and plan that you have placed upon our lives. So we thank you, Lord, for establishing our steps according to your word, for it is written uh, that the righteous that the righteous are uh, moved according to the word of the Most High. So we thank you for your word, for writing your commandments upon our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for implanting your word within our mind uh, to give us a new perspective on life. We thank you, Lord, for choosing us and making a way for us. And we thank you, Lord, for helping us to overcome uh, the evils that transpire in our everyday lives. For these and many more blessings, we ask your mighty and powerful name. We do pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right. So the Lord has definitely blessed me to, to wake up again this morning. Um, last last night was a uh, pretty tough, tough time in the spiritual realm. Um, well, I deal with a lot of things on a regular basis. So uh, most, most apostles are the most high do. Uh, but our lives are not our own. So we're willing to lay our lives down for the flock, for the sheep, and most importantly, for, for the call and the purpose that's on our lives that has been uh, given to us by the Most High, right? There are difficult times ahead, even difficult times now, but we just have to persevere and we have to uh, endure in this season of our lives. This is the end of days more importantly, the final hour. So we have to just stand and yet stand. A lot of things are transpiring out of control. Um, it's chaos everywhere that we look. Um, but for those who are deeply embroidered in the word of truth, who are studied and well-learned, who have uh, received a higher 
in-depth understanding of the scripture from the most high and the spirit of revelation, that we're more prepared mentally uh, and spiritually to handle these uh, these atrocities that uh, are made manifest within our lives. So we just got to lift our heads up. We got to continue to press forward towards the mark of a higher, a higher calling, and we must keep the faith, right? There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. The Lord loves us, but he definitely desires that we continue to move forward in him and focus on him so that we uh, we won't fall fall upon deaf ears or that we won't drown in sinking sand in deep, shallow waters. So the Lord is keeping our head above ground just as long as we stay uh, standing upon the foundation of our faith, which is in the word of God and the testimony of, of Christ. Right. So that's my encouragement, my exhortation unto you by the spirit of the most high. Right. So let's get let's get into our topic for today. Let's get into our topic for today. Like I said, we are definitely uh, in the end of days. All right. We're in the final hour. Uh, and we have to understand how to discern and to target certain certain spirits. Uh, in the spiritual realm, especially as it relates to spiritual warfare. The spirit of seduction is one of the most horrific, defiling spirits that is used by the enemy to target the flesh of believers and to pull them away from the most high, right? So that means one minute you can be believing, the next minute doubt probably entered into your heart because that seductive spirit that presented you with something more material materialized to to sway you away from the promises of the most high. So God God is telling you one thing, that he's going to bless you if you keep the faith, if you remain patient. And then when your patience run, runs thin and you decide to give up give up on what the word is spoken to you about or what God has spoken to you about through his word, then you gravitate towards uh the get the get rich quick type of uh, mindset, right? So that's when the enemy comes in uh, and he transforms himself into a spirit of seduction to tempt you and take you away from the perfect will of the most high. You have to remember that God has something for you. He had, if he gave you life, then that means he has something for you. But we have to practice perfect patience in this season, right? If one over if one succumbs to the influence of seducing spirits, they will eventually lose their relationship with the most high. Okay? That means if you succumb to the influence of seducing spirits, you will eventually lose your relationship with the most high. Not instantly. Not instantly. Most relationships are lost over an extended period of time. So if you continually continue to sin against the most high, then eventually he's going to have to take his hand off of you. He's going to have to remove his spirit from within you. No matter how many times you pray and you repent, remember there's an expiration date for all habits, all habits. All right. Think about yourself. You wouldn't want somebody to repetitively, um, uh, sin against you or transgress, transgress against you or do something to harm you. You won't out of that situation. So it's the same thing with the Most High as it relates to his people. Yes, he loves his people, but he don't want to remain in a one-sided relationship. He don't want to remain in a one-sided relationship. You still you still have that mentality and attitude to uh, commit adultery against the Most High and to give into seducing spirits, but you still have your hand extended towards him for the material, but you don't want the spiritual relationship with the most high. No one wants to be a part of those type of relationships. You are the all in or not at all. Relationships demand reciprocity. Reciprocity. Okay. All right. Right, like the scripture says, the scripture says in Proverbs 1 and 10, my son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If sinners entice you, do not consent. Okay, in part one of our seducing spirits, I may mention of what it means to be enticed and what it means to uh, 
to consent to something. So I'm going to reintroduce that right now. What does it mean to consent? All right. The word consent means to give your stamp of approval. You're okay to go forward. All right. It also means to uh, to agree to do something, to give the green light or to conform to. All right. So you're basically telling you'll be telling these spirits and these people that, hey, it's OK for you to use my mind to sin against the most high. It's OK for you to sow seeds of corruption in my heart so that I can become an unproductive citizen of the kingdom of heaven and lose my relationship with the most high. You're telling them that, all right? When you give your consent, you're okay or the green light. Okay? We get, uh, we oftentimes give examples of how these things actually uh, transpire in our everyday lives. Okay, I think we use the example of uh, like drugs, narcotics. You know, as a believer. You have a solid foundation in the word of truth. You grew up in an environment um, where, your, where your parents or your grandparents uh, place spiritual expectations on you to keep God's commandments. However, you decided within yourself, within your flesh, that you wanted to observe the ways of the world. You wanted to give into your carnal um, ambitions and your temptations. You wanted to sample a few test subjects to see how things, how, how these, how these things move other people euphorically. Okay. So the drug dealer comes by and he says, Hey man, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a blunt for free. I know you've never smoked before, but I'll give you a blunt for, for free. You know, it's wrong. You know, you don't need that. But you say, well, I've been thinking about this for a while. So you know what? I'm going to try it out. I'm gonna try that. Okay, okay. I'm gonna make sure my mom, my dad doesn't see me see me do it. I'm gonna wait till they they going out for the weekend. Once they leave, uh, I'm gonna go behind the house and I'm gonna light this thing up. I'm gonna smoke it, right? Then after you smoke it, you've just given in to temptation. When you smoke it, you've just given in to temptation, and then the spirit instantaneously convicts you because you know better. Now you're hurt, all right? And if, you, if you're really weak, guess what else is going to happen? It's going to become a habit. You're going to want more and more and more and more, even though you, you know it's wrong, because you allow uh, the seductress to come and tempt you to try something that you know isn't, um, isn't good or biologically conducive for your body. That's a prime example. And it can be used for anything, anything, whatever you desire within your flesh that's wrong, that seducing spirit is going to appear and give you a sample. Every chance they get, they're going to give you a sample until you're completely broken down and lose your relationship with the most high. Then it's, then it's going to feel like it's hard. It's, it's very hard to let go and to actually get a piece of uh, what they originally gave you because now they got you you're an addict they don't have to help you anymore then you're going to go what seeking them out they're not going to have to seek you out anymore you're going to seek out those seducing spirits so that's the manipulation of the mind that the enemy always uh, uh or attack that the enemy always uses to Take the, take the believer away from the instructions of the Most High or the commandments of the Most High. Simple. Right? <clears throat> We're going to move on. Okay. All right. What does it mean to separate from the Most High God? What are the effects of, being, of experiencing a separation from the Most High? Well, the effects of such a separation can be very dire, resulting in both a spiritual death and psychological issues, a spiritual death and psychological issues. Remember that the Most High is the source of our strength. He empowers our spirit to live through his commandments. So when you separate yourself from the Most High, you begin to die, not always instantly, 
but you begin to die over time, okay? You go on a spiritual decline, a, deep, a depreciation that results in depression, psychological issues. So what are the consequences to such behavior or what is the most highest response to this, to this deliberate defiance against his word of instructions? How does the most high respond to us deliberately disobeying, I mean, disobeying him and defying his instructions? Let's find out, right? Let's find out what the scripture says concerning this issue. All right, um, Tessa, give me Acts 28, 25 through 27. Right, we're gonna find out what the most high says concerning these issues. What is his response to us deliberately defying his instructions for us to stay away from these seductive spirits or to resist temptation at all costs, even if it costs us our lives? How important is it for us to not stray away from his word of truth? All right. You want me to read it or you want to read it? Uh, yeah, you can read it for me. All right, verse 25. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well, spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers. 26. Saying, go unto this people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and, understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. Verse 27, for the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. All right, let's break this thing down a little bit. So here is saying, verse six, verse 26, saying, go unto this people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. So you're going to hear the word of the Most High, but you're not going to understand it. So is it, it isn't about going to church and hearing the word of the Most High. It's the provision of spiritual understanding that you need, the breakdown of the scripture or the text that is uh, being read to you by the pastor or the minister or the ministering spirit that the Lord sends, sends your way to give you a prophetic word concerning your situation. So you are... You're now in a state where you have deaf ears. You have deaf ears. You hear, but you don't really hear. You hear, but you don't understand. You hear, but you cannot ascertain the information that's being relayed to you because you have, you're have you now experiencing a spiritual separation from the Most High. He's cut you off. He's cut you off. So whether it's for a season, a reason, or a lifetime, you've been cut off because of your um, your inactivity and behavior towards the Most High where you decided, hey, I'm not going to worship him obediently anymore. I'm going to go my own way. I'm going to continue to dibble and dabble in temptation and sin in the cesspools of life, and I'm going to allow this thing to contaminate me. When clearly the, um, the word says, uh, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord except those who have what? clean hands and a pure heart so when you're contaminated you cannot approach the throne of grace boldly because there's no sincerity there's no humility there's no righteous purification uh there's no holiness when the word clearly says be thy be thy holy as thy father in heaven is holy uh worship the lord in the beauty of holiness so god has to sanctify you through his word you have to make yourself prepared to approach him even when you're going through, you have to make yourself prepared to approach him. How are you going to do that if you if you you continue you're continuing in your sins? If you're allowing the spirit of seduction to cause you to transgress transgress against the holy law, you got to get yourself pure, undefiled. What do the words say? Undefiled from the what? The world. Let no corrupt thought enter into your mind or into your heart or into the resources of your inner person. You have to let these things go. The word says, if any man be in who? Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. 
All right. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You're not the same person anymore. You don't have the same mind. You don't have the same ideology, the outlook on life, perspective. He's changed you. All right. So the Lord is literally making these people ears deaf um, in Acts 28, 25 through 27. Right. Isaiah 6 and 9 through 10 says, he said, go and tell this people, keep on listening, but do not proceed. So the Lord said, you're going to listen to this word, but you're not going to proceed. You're not going to understand. Keep on looking, but do not understand. Keep observing the commandments. Keep reading your Bible. Keep reading your word. But because of your disobedience and your deliberate defiance, you're not going to understand the very word that's sitting right there in front of you in your Bibles that you're reading. They're not, the word is not just going to jump into your, your subconscious anymore. The spirit is not going to grant you revelation anymore. Why? Because you have been separated from the most high due to disobedience and defiance. Now, like I said before, this could be a what? Reason, season, or a lifetime. It depends on you and it depends on the divine judgment of the most high, what he desires for your, for your life. Okay. <clears throat> All right. This says, you guys. Oh, um, okay. I'm okay. Okay. This says, render the hearts of this people insensitive. Render the hearts of this people insensitive. What does that word insensitive mean in this context? All right. In Isaiah 6, 9 through 10, the word insensitive means that you will no longer be sensitive towards the spirit. You will no longer hear the voice of the good shepherd. The ministering angels are no, no longer going to whisper in your ears and give you a right now word to help you in your current situation. Why? Because the Lord is disciplining. He, he's disciplining you in that season, in that moment, in that time. All right. So you try to fight for it. I'm, I'm going to hear this word. I'm going to hear this word. I'm used to hearing this word uh, all the time. People relying on me. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. You're so focused on people relying on you that you forgot that they're supposed to worship and honor the most high, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai. All attention and all the glory must be given unto what? The most high and not you. Pastors, leaders, shepherds, prophets, priests, ministers of the faith, evangelists, apostles, the people's the people are supposed to what? They're supposed to gravitate towards the most high. The words say, if he be lifted up in all of the earth, he'll draw all men unto him. Yeah, he can use you, but you need to be in a humble state where he can operate through you. Where you die to yourself, and the only thing that the people see is the glory of the, the most high emanating from you. That's what these things are supposed to be about, not about you. And how many people, how many people are uh, you can gain or the crowds that you can gain or the large congregation that you can gain to uh, to elevate your your fame and your fortune. That's evil, wicked, malicious, diabolical. Everything the Lord told you not to do, you decide to do it because you were puffed up in pride. So he's saying, guess what? You're going to get off up in this church one day, do a sermon, and you're not going to be able to hear the voice of the Most High anymore. You can read the word. You have a, a whole scripture prepared, but guess what? You're not going to be able to understand what you're reading. So the information that, that you're relaying to the people isn't going to be sound. They can read the word for themselves. But as a minister, you have to provide them with a certain level or degree of understanding to lay a solid platform or foundation of God's word so that they can build and a build and expound upon that which you have um have sown into their heart. But you were so defiant, you said, Hey, um, I'm allowed the festivities of life, worldly systems, vain imaginations these seducing spirits to take me away from the original plan and purpose that the Lord established me in the first place. That's what I'm going to do. All right. 
right? The Lord say, otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and return and be healed. He said, not in this season. You're not going to understand anything or you're going to return and be healed. He said, not in this season. You got to learn respect and obedience. Most high say, he says, he's the father and you're his children. This is his house. The house of Israel is his house. The world belongs to him, not you. You have to be obedient even unto death. Strive to keep God's commandments and observe his instructions to do them. Not just to sound prophetic and prolific, but to actually apply the principles that you're speaking to the congregation of the Most High. You have to apply them. And of course, these are things we are we're all we're already supposed to know. Uh, we have to realize that the judgments of Yahweh are active according to the duration of time the Most High gave uh, these people to repent. So the judgments are according to the duration of time in which the Most High has given his people to repent. Just like a judge. All right. Some people don't stand trial until three, four, six months, sometimes to a year. Right, so every judgment is according to a specific time, depending on the person. The person. So, this is the Lord actively operating in our lives, and it could be that He's giving you a chance to repent, to turn away from your evils and your sins before He before He make um, decides the final verdict or the judgment for your life. They don't mean he's going to completely drop the char charges depending on what you're doing. And sometimes he will if the sin is very minute and minor. But that's according to his will and what he desires to do. Not us. Our job is to be sensitive and sincere towards the Most High and humble ourselves. So that he will look favorably upon us when we have transgressed the law. But don't deliberately try to manipulate the most high and see if if you can override his judgments because he's going to take heart to that. He's going to acknowledge your efforts to sin and to manipulate him and to seduce him. And we're about to get into we're about to get into how a lot of those things are uh, a lot of people try to use these tactics and maneuvers to sway the most high God away from what he's trying to do in the earth realm. People legitimately try to stand against the Most High. What the words say? Sinners can gather hand in hand. Right? You get that scripture for me? You don't mind? Okay. Because this is very important. I want my wife to get that for us real quick. All right? No one can directly determine when judgment will strike, especially against sinners. Pastors, you can't determine when judgment is going to strike. You can't. You can warn the people, but it's not your job to determine when judgment is going to strike. Okay? And you can't always sit up there and attempt to pray, pray stuff away from people because you'll be operating against the most high. He, he knows how to discipline his children, his people. Don't he discipline you? Stay out the way. Become a part of the process of, of productivity and don't be an opposition against the process of productivity. That reminds me. Of, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That reminds me of like, you know, just imagine a parent discipline a child like with the belt or whatever and the grandparent jumping in the way, you know, trying to prevent the child from getting that discipline when in fact that child may very well need that discipline. The word talks about if you spare the rod, like um, you're pretty much going to give your child over into death. I see. You know, so... And that's just like with the most high, like you can't get in the way of him disciplining his child. That's right. Because the word says he disciplined those whom he loves. So see. I have the scripture too. All right. Um okay, she has the scripture. Okay, you read it, babe. All right, so it comes from Proverbs eleven, verse twenty one. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Excellent. So though hand in hand the wicked should not go unpunished, all right? So they can join forces, 
They could come into mutual agreement or mutual implication, depending on something that they're trying to conjure up to combat against the most high. Like we see today, a lot of these uh, global um, superpowers and nations do their best to come to, to come together, join hand in hand, create all of these um, uh, these agreements so that they combat, com can combat against the most high. But the Lord says in his word, he says, Though they join hand in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. They shall not go unpunished. And the Lord is not about to go back on his word for you, for me, or for nobody. Simple. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. It's already here. And the more you try to resist the discipline of the Most High, the conviction of the Spirit, and the correction of the Most High, guess what? It's going to be harder and harder and harder on you. And then eventually it's going to result in death. That's the penalty. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ. All right? So reevaluate your mind. Okay? We also have to conclude that these particular group of individuals decided within themselves to give into idols and seducing spirits and harden their hearts against the most high. The sinners that join hand in hand, they decided within themselves, according to the flesh, to give into idols and seducing spirits and harden their hearts against the most high. The words say, today you hear the voice of the Lord, what? Harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. Open yourself up to him. Allow him to purify you, to convict you, to remove those evil devices that have been made manifest within you. Please don't rationalize the situation saying, no, that ain't God. No, that's just a coincidence. Please don't do that. See? Wage war against your members at all times. Wage war against your vices at all times, your evil devices. Right? How can we help each other out since we're on the topic? Um, what the word says, confess ye faults one to another that we may pray for one another so that we might be healed. Yeah. For the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. That's a way that we can help each other out. We're going through, we had to confess our faults. Even if we haven't given into our faults, a lot of times they manifest in our thought process and uh, we need somebody to help assist us so that we won't be consumed by that which, been, which is being projected by the flesh. Mm -hmm. Any evil enticing thing. Men don't always suffer from women. That's the primary. The promiscuous woman is the primary image that probably projects in his mind. But it can be other things. Hunger for money or desire for money fortune and fame that can be it so you got to tell somebody that loves you that's a believer and that you can discern is going to do right by you in prayer they're going to take it to god in prayer so that you can be healed Amen. not somebody just going to go in prayer and and uh and conduct witchcraft and cut you down worse than <laughs> which that you started right. be laying for you but um i recently heard someone say um, your thoughts are not your identity. So don't even be ashamed of those faults or those thoughts in your mind. You know, they're, they're not who you are. You know, just like my husband said, tell someone so you can overcome that thing. See? <clears throat> All right. Most people are so drunk in the... All right. Most people are so drunk in the intoxication of sinful acts and vain imaginations that they don't even realize that they are being mistreated by the enemy. You're so drunk and intoxicated by sinful acts and vain imaginations that you don't even realize that you are being mistreated by the enemy. You don't even know you're being seduced because you're intoxicated. You're under the influence of the persuasive words of the civil, civil tongue serpent. You believe anything these people tell you and they mesmerize you, hypnotize you. Now you can't even see your way out of the darkness, out of the entrapment, out of that stumbling block. They got you entangled in a web of lies and transgression. Can I say something? Go ahead. I want to go back and recant something I just said. I said your thoughts are not your identity because i don't want to go against scripture because the scriptures say as a man thinking in his heart so is he so i will say your temptations are not your identity okay how's that is that better 
Because I want to go against scripture. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I think, man, you talked about this with uh, the statement that Paul made about him being tempted in the flesh apart from the spirit. Yeah. Like uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh, the flesh is, is weak. Is weak. Yeah. So uh, in, a, in a sense, it's not to be contaminated or influenced by the vain imagination of the flesh. However, the spirit has a different degree of willpower that the flesh doesn't have to resist temptation and mm -hmm. sin. All right. So, uh, yeah, you essentially, yeah, you, you are your thoughts according to the spirit. If you have been transformed through Christ, um, but they're not your thoughts. If the flesh is waging war against the spirit yeah. that's within you to help you to be obedient to the instructions of the most high. Right. Thank you. So that's that separation. Now, this is only for believers now who give their whole heart. This, is not, this isn't for everybody. Some people are their thoughts according to their flesh because they are still what? A part of the world system. Yeah. You know? So some people have thoughts of whoremongering. And therefore, they are whoremongers because they don't have the spirit of the most high. They don't have the word of truth resonating within their heart. And they don't have a relationship with Yahweh Shai, the, pre the precious lamb of God. All right. Okay. The enemy has has them hypnotized by their spells and enchantments. Okay. The old the, the ancient prophets actually spoke against spells and enchantments. This is what they were talking about. Their false hope and false promises lead many astray due to the passions of the flesh. People prevent you with false hope. False hope. We see it in the media every every day. They present you with false hope. And they have you believing that they can work issues out on your behalf. Then when they disappoint you, you're lost because you chose them world leaders over the most high. You start leaning and depending on individuals who operate only according to the flesh. They lie to you and say, well, uh, I got Christ on the inside of me. However, their fruits don't show their relationship with Yahweh Shai. Simple. The words say that what a tree is known by the fruits in which it bears. So you got to spend you have to spend time evaluating these individuals, even during election time. Because they talk so fast that you don't have a chance to evaluate, uh, evaluate their spiritual intentions or their hard intentions towards you. Then you end up voting for these elected officials and you didn't seek the most high for his um his wisdom concerning this situation. Now you're disappointed. You allow these people to seduce you, their campaigns to seduce you. All right. It's time to mature and it's time to grow up. We know better now. We have more information that's provided for us in this day than we previously had. So there are no excuses. The only problem is we gravitate to, towards too much mess and junk. So we could be more intelligent and more rational than we are now, but we decided, hey, um, I'd, rather, I'd rather look at this foolishness on YouTube. I'd rather uh, look at uh, Bad Girls Club and all this BET stuff just destroying our people. I'm talking to the, mainly to the black folks. So we got to get away from this mess, mess and junk, these televised, uh, um, televised air, airways. That's what the enemy using these airways to destroy your mind. That's what he's doing. Okay? Yes. Oh. Um, no. Well, I'll just say this. Um, just to compliment what you said. Psalms 118 verse 8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Excellent. All right. <clears throat> okay, here's here's a good one. Um, 2 Timothy 4 and 4 says, And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. These people will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Let's find out what fables are. Fables are a fictitious tale or stories not found on fact. So they're going to gravitate towards fables, falsehood, lies. They're going to turn away from the truth. Does the Lord give people over, over to the consequence of sin when they are found to be completely um, unredeemable? Notice what I said. Does the Lord give people over to the consequence of sin 
when they are found to be completely unredeemable? The answer to that is yes. He is the judge of judges and his judgment is wise and full of righteousness. Okay, He will give you over to a reprobated mind according to the scriptures. Right? Um, I have one, something to complement that. Okay. All right. So um, this comes from 2 Thessalonians um, chapter 2, verses 11 through 12. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they shall, should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. Wow. You care to explain that? Um, so pretty much going back to what my husband said, like God will give you over to a reprobate mind if your mind is just made up that you're not going to follow his ways, that you're not going to keep his commandments, you're going to continue to give in to these seductive spirits. And after a while, like he said, you'll just go to search them out. You know, you'll be at one with these spirits. So God will, you'll be searching for God. Well, you probably won't even be searching for God anymore because, well, I don't want to over talk because I can start rambling, but Long story short, God will cause you to believe a lie if your mind is just set on unrighteousness. You'll be in a whole delusion out here. That's it. All right. All right. I have a scripture to complement that one as well. Um, Romans 11 and 8 says, Just as it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor. Okay? Eyes to see, see not, and ears to hear not, down to this very day. That's what the word said. In Romans 11 and 8, just as it is written, God gave them gave them over to a spirit of stupor. He made them stupid. Okay? Eyes to see not and ears to hear not down to this very day. What were the watchmen doing during the time of the great falling away? Okay? Were they themselves deceived and consumed by the lust of the flesh and seducing spirits? Right. Who are the watchmen? The watchmen are the shepherds that are supposed to oversee the flock of the Most High. That's who the watchmen are. They can be considered what? Prophets, seers, watchers, whomever. They are the ones in which the Lord gives vision to. Vision. To lead his people into truth and to forewarn them of events to come. However, these watchmen became seduced by the very spirits that they're supposed to be warning the people to be alert um, on. For it is written, what? Be watchful and sober and sober minded at all times for the enemy goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's the message that the watchers are supposed to be given, that the shepherds are supposed to be feeding the sheep, according to the word, to be watchful at all times, not sometimes, at all times. For the enemy goes about as a what? Roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He wants to destroy you and devour you. He wants to seduce you in a world of temptation, endless bliss, and materialized constructs that has nothing to do with spiritual enlightenment or righteous edification. The word says that flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. He who turns his head away from the plow is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. So we got to keep our eyes on the prize. We got to stand on our faith firmly. The Lord has to cover us in his love and the abundance of his eternal glory. Lest he see us in a per, per, perpetual, perpetual um, act of sinful lust and enticement. Then he has to what? Remove his spirit from us. David recognized this. What did David say? Whatever you do, Lord, please take not that spirit away from me. David didn't try to hide his sin. He laid his sin on the altar every chance that he got, and he accepted the chastening of the Lord. But it's one thing that David didn't want the Lord to do. He didn't want him to take his spirit away from him. He didn't want him to, he didn't want to experience that what? That separation. That separation. All right? Isaiah 56 and 10 says, His watchmen are blind. All of them know nothing. All of them are mute dogs, unable to bark. Dreamers lying down who love to slumber. 
All right. So these people, they, they dream all day. They dream up their own dreams, their own ambitions. And even the revelation that the Lord give unto them, they don't they don't allow the spirit to give them in the, the appropriate interpretation of these dreams so that they can so that they can relay the messages that the Lord gave them to his people. So they just silent watchdogs. They see, but they don't they don't warn anybody. Yeah. Okay. I have something to compliment what you said. This comes from Ezekiel 33, verse 6. It says, But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hands. So it's saying like if the um, watchman don't blow the trumpet, don't warn these people about God's judgment, and that caused people to just fall into their iniquity, God is going to require that person's blood. It's going to be, their blood is going to be on his hands. So. Wow. So we don't want the blood on our hands. We don't want the blood on our hands. It's going to be for prophets. Sometimes the Lord will tell his people uh, to keep silent. But more often than not, he wants you to relay the message in due time, in due season, as he inspires you. As he inspires you, whether it's good times or whether it's tough times, he's, he's going to want you to relay these messages. He's going to test you in it. What's more important, what's more, what's more valuable to you, the world or delivering the message of the Most High to his sheep, feeding his sheep? He said, if you love me, feed my sheep. That's what he told his apostles. If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lamb. All right. The word say that he gives what seed to the sower and the sowers sow the word. Amen. So it's like everybody has a responsibility, like the, the watchmen, the shepherds, and also the listeners, the congregation, because one makes it what you said earlier about how don't put your trust in man, but up in God, because that watchman or that shepherd that you're relying on, you're relying for him to give you serve you the word of truth. But yet and still, he could be about to, his, your blood could very well be about to be on his hand due to him not delivering a word properly, a word of judgment or rebuke to you. So it's like you still have a part to play in reading your word and doing what the word says to you. See? Right? <clears throat> Habakkuk 2 and 19 says, Woe to him who says to a piece of wood, awake. To a mute stone arise, and that and that is your teacher. Behold, is it, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all inside it. So you're making a graven image or a picture your teacher. No life is inside of that picture. Even if a demon possesses it, it's still no life inside of that picture. We've seen the movies. You know, the, like the horror films and all that, where the pictures come to life and these demons be possessing these pictures. But there's still no, there's no life, according to the word, according to the spirit of holiness. There is no life in these, in these stones, in these uh, graven images, in these wood manufactured products. There's no life. Just like the golden calf incident with the children of Israel in the wilderness, when Moses went upon the to the, the mountain to receive the commandments from the Most High God. There was no life in the golden calf. That was an insult. Israelites worshiping a uh, structure that doesn't even doesn't even speak or relay messages. They're worse that that golden calf became their teacher, but he can't even speak. How is he going to teach you anything? Right. So we have to stop worshiping images. Right. Okay. What is an idol? And how can it how can it have seductive charm? An idol is an image or representation of a god used as an object of worship. An idol can be a deity, a person, place, thing, or an idea. Okay, you can idolize your ideas. Okay, it is a person or thing that is greatly admired, loved, and revered. Right, such as in the case of foreign gods, kings, and celebrities. And most idols are usually false, meaning they either aren't real or they aren't living a life according to the truth. Right. What does the word say about idol, idol worship? An idol usually 
has some attractive feature that that's used to lure people in. Okay? An idol usually has some attractive features that are used to lure people in, mean real people in. 1 Samuel 12 and 24 says, Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he has done for you. So this is the prophet relaying the message to the children of Israel, telling them to what? Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth. With all your heart, not in a lie, but in truth. And the only way to inherit the truth is to what? Observe the instructions of the Most High and to keep his commandments according to his word. Right. He says, do this with all your heart, for consider how great things ha he has done for you. How did Christ Yeshua respond to the temptations of Satan in the wilderness? Okay, we're almost done. Luke 4 and 8 says, and Yahweh shy answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Even though we testify according to what is written as it relates to Yeshua being tested in the wilderness, we have to understand that seducing spirits have no respect of person, right? Seducing spirits have no respect of person. The enemy attempted to reduce to um seduce um Yahweh Shai, which you guys call Jesus, right? So imagine yourselves. The word says what? The student is not greater than the, the master. If they persecuted him, then they're also going to going to persecute you because you follow after him. So realistically. This is telling us that these spirits have no respect of person whatsoever. So this is why Christ told them what? Behold, I send you out as sheep amongst the wolves, but it be as keen as serpents that be attentive, knowledgeable, wise, but as humble as doves, having the sincerity of heart. Be as keen as serpents. Don't be unwise. Be wise. According to the word of truth, be wise. And if you lack wisdom, ask your generous God who is faithful to give it unto you just as long as you don't what? Ask amiss. Ask according to your own, your own desires. Try to, try to employ trickery and manipulate the most high to take into yourselves his gift to boost your own egos and to serve your own ambitions. Well, Lord, please bless me with wisdom to do this and to do that. And when he give it to you, you stop acknowledging him. You stop acknowledging him. You forget about him. Then what's going to happen? There comes that separation. Then you're going to lose the gift. Then you're going to try to crawl back to him, but he's not going to give it to you as fast as he did before. Which is good. We all need to be taught a lesson on Oh, how not to attempt to manipulate or tempt the most high God. Israel tried that before. All right. These spirits will try whomever they may, even attempting, uh, even attempting to tempt the most high. So with his wisdom reflected in the light, we must understand as believers, we should be red alert, watchful of the enemy. The enemy will even test people to see if he, can persuade God. Uh, give me Deuteronomy 6, 13 through 16. See, if we don't use scripture, then you guys are not going to believe that the enemy even used people to try to tempt the most high. 6, 13 through 16? Yeah. We're going to prove this. Satan tried to tempt the most high. He did it in the book of Job too. The enemy or the adversary attempted to tempt or seduce the most high. All right. Deuteronomy 6 and 13 through 16 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods and the gods of the people which are around about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord 
thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. All right. Verse 16 this is about to prove my point. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. All right. That's when the children of Israel were in the wilderness. They attempted to tempt the most high God. Right. So this says ye shall not tempt the Lord your God. Tempt him to what? To wrath. Because it's an insult for you to even try to tempt the most high. You ain't going to do nothing but just incite his wrath. It's an insult. Right. Just like a child try to manipulate their parents and their parents already be on to them. Just waiting for them to just come on out and tell the truth. Yeah. Then when the opportunity arises for them to tell the truth, they still they still uh, decide to, to lie about what they're doing. Then the parents just get upset. See, I already know what you were doing in the first place. I just wanted you to tell me the truth. The penalty would have been a lot, a lot, uh, a lot easier on you if you would have just told me the truth. I would have understood. But because you tried to manipulate me like you manipulate your friends and your peers, now I'm gonna have to take your cell phone away from you. I'm gonna take your car away from you. You can't watch any TV. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to um, do additional study time after school. I'm not going to cook you no more fried chicken. You got to eat fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Our black people really be upset. Okay. I want some fried chicken or at least bake it or something, mama. Don't take that away from me. Your daddy stopped giving you allowance, meaning he stopped allowing you to go out. He don't want you around him because you lied to him. And that hurt you worse because you thought you had a good relationship with daddy. And dad said, I can't have anybody that's a, that will lie to me around me. I love you, but I'm very, very, very disappointed with you. You tried to tempt me and manipulate me and seduce me like you do your friends or your so-called boyfriends, which you shouldn't have at your age in the first place. So this is a breakdown of uh, giving you, you know, an in-depth understanding of how the most high uh, views his people. We are his children. We're supposed to be his children. But some of you act like heathens, the Gentiles. But he still loves you. But guess what? If he had to cut you loose, he's going to cut you a loose. You're going to be cut loose. There's going to be a divine separation. He's going to divorce you just like he divorced Israel. But he always keeps what? A remnant for himself, those who kept the righteous commandments of the most high God. He hasn't forgotten about them. The words say that the righteous are preserved. But you guys who has given in to seducing spirits went your own way, serving idols, worshiping idols, pagan holidays, such as Christmas. Yeah, I said it. Some of you celebrate Halloween. I'm going to go on and say it. Valentine's Day. That day, these type of days that just destroy people. I wish I had a, a Valentine. You wouldn't feel that way if it wasn't a Valentine day. But it's a special day. It's a special day for couples. It's a special day. Look, if you're going to do something for your spouse or your significant other or the person that you're courting, you can do that at any time of the year. You can make that special for that person. You can make it special for that person. Don't you know that these type of days, a lot of people commit suicide because they feel like they don't have enough during Christmas time. They feel like they don't have enough because you let these these pagan worshipers invent a holiday and cause you cause you to worship that holiday, too, that the Lord told you not to worship. Then you wonder why you're in the condition that you're in. That's because it's sin. You were defiant and disobedient. Yes, we were once unlearned and we didn't know any better. But when you reach a certain age of maturity, you should change some things about your life or the word should inspire you to change, to transform your mind. Don't let me get on Easter. You worshiping an Easter bunny. Then the church leaders get up in church and lie to you and tell you, well, this is Resurrection Sunday. Then after church, they go high Easter eggs. So it's about Christ, but it's about the Easter bunny too. That's a lie right there. You can't recognize that. 
I know this is a hard pill to swallow, but at some point, we just got to let go of idol worship and, and stop allowing these these systems that are designed to seduce us to have influence over our mind and take back control of our lives through the word of truth. How do we overcome these evil atrocities? Well, the word say we overcome by the what? We overcome evil by the what? The lamb and by the blood of our testimony. And we do not love our lives so unto death. For he who tries to save his life will lose it. Right? But he who gives up his life, what is it? For his name's sake shall find it. Shall find it. So give up the old person, the old man. The word say, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in what? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Let that mind that is also in Christ Jesus be within us. And God will grant you peace that surpasses all understanding. Just you have to give up some things in your life. Traditions, you have to give up traditions. It's okay. Some elder has to stand up and say, hey, and the elder don't have to be old. We found young elders in the Bible. Some eight years old, 10 years old, um, 17, 18 years old. So when the Lord promotes you, he, his expectation of you is to be a pioneer to change things. Stop just going along with things. Change the scope of your imagination. Christ didn't let, he didn't let certain traditions control him. So you can overcome, but you got to give up yourself. You're still going to have struggles, but for the most part, the Lord can work with you if you die to yourself, if you try, try to keep the faith, give it your all in all. If, if the Lord is your all in all, then you need to give your all in all to him. The words say what? Humble thyself before the Lord. Resist Satan and he must flee. If you draw near to God, God will draw near unto you. He said he resists the proud but gives grace to the humble and even more grace. So don't worry about having to give up traditions and different things. He's going to work it out in your favor. Do something different. Do something different. Right. This is your relationship that's on the line. I have a complimentary scripture. All right, I have a scripture I would like to add to that. Um, it's Romans 6, um, verse 4. It says, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Excellent. <clears throat> newness of life. I like that. New lifestyle. New customs. New culture. Social influences. Shouldn't be the same. Shouldn't be influenced by the mass media. Them what? Forcing their propaganda on you, telling you to follow and go this way, go that way, go this way. Put your full faith and trust in the Most High so you can be prepared for the evil day. Temptation is one of the most, I like to use the word horrific because it's horrifying. Strongholds that can be over your mind. It should hurt you to allow the same temptation to overcome you over and over and over and over again with no active defense against it. You should be crying out to the Lord, Lord, why does this keep happening to me? Even if you don't give it to that temptation, you should still cry out to the Lord in prayer. Lead us not into what? Temptation, but deliver us from all sin and evil. For he is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. If Christ had to pray that, then you got to pray that. Lead us not into temptation. Even when the enemy comes to tempt you, don't give in, but overcome. The words say overcome what? Evil with good. And do not allow your what? Good to be evil spoken of. All right, we're about to close out. Israel as a whole nation brought it upon themselves to tempt the most high as a whole nation. Right? 
as a whole nation. There was certain individuals who weren't a part of their, their mutual implication to sin against the Most High, um, to tempt him into wrath. But as a whole nation, they brought it upon themselves to tempt the Most High. Your own people will be used to tempt you to sin. Your own people, if it happened to the Most High, it can happen to you. Your own people will be used to tempt you to sin. No matter how pure you are, you're still going to be tempted or tested. Right? If you are, if you consent to the way of sinners, you will be found in error against the commandments of the Most High. Simple. If you consent to the way of sinners, you will be found in error against the commandments of the Most High. Period. That's what the end. That's what's at the end of this sentence right here. A period. A stamp. Right. You don't want to be found in error. Against the most high. Okay? You got something? Um, well, I'll share it. Um, this kind of goes back also to what my husband was talking about, like Christmas and stuff. The only thing, um, this is what Christ said concerning doing in remembrance of him. Not December twenty fifth isn't in nowhere in the Bible, but this is what he says concerning remembering him. This comes from first Corinthians chapter eleven, verses twenty four through twenty five. It reads and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Good. Thanks. So communion is the only thing Jesus mentions to do in remembrance of him. See sure is especially until uh, israel is the true israelites are restored as a nation okay we talked about this we know who the true israelites are uh but until they are restored as a nation where they can uh my wife she knows a lot about this she's in uh she's in school for uh theology yeah biblical and theological studies biblical and theological studies so she understands the customs of uh of the times uh, especially as it relates to ancient Israel, some odd, what, uh, 3,000, uh, 2,000 years ago, you know, before Christ and um, a little bit after Christ, they held certain certain traditions based off of what the Lord desired. So, uh, like, one would be, like, the New Moon. Yeah. You know, new what's it called? New Moon Festival? Or something? Yeah, New Moon Festival. Okay, the New Moon Festival. That's just, that's one. And then, um, what's another one? Just to get them an idea like the the old like some of their customs and traditions that they have had to keep like uh let's use the sabbath day yeah. okay the sabbath day that's that's one of them okay the lord puts the emphasis on the sabbath day which passover passover that's what i was looking for and the passover so uh you know until israel is gathered gathered back together as a nation not the Khazarian jews that's over there occupying the land of israel that call themselves Is israelis but the actual Israelites, the black men and women uh, that went into bondage and slavery, some are 400 something years ago. OK, um, our people. Right. So we have to really, really consider the truth. It's not about hurting anyone's feelings, but the truth is the truth. When the Lord revealed the truth to you, you have to accept it, acknowledge it or reject it. It's your choice. OK, so. Uh, yeah, these are some of the things that were customary to Israel at that time. And then, as we see in the book of uh, Revelation, along with some of the Old Testament um, prophetic uh, utterances or prophetic words or writings that tell us that the Lord is going to restore restore a lot of these customs back. But it's things that we can be doing now, like she said, the Holy Communion, um, the keeping of the Sabbath, um, and just acknowledging the truth as a whole. Even if we can't keep the law, we still have to acknowledge the law. All right? So, uh, let's see. Is that the end? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the end. Uh, just gave you um, in-depth details on what seducing spirits are and how even these seducing spirits will try to tempt the most high. Simple. All right? They try to tempt the most high. Words say what? 
Put not the Lord thy God into the test. That's what his words say. Put not the Lord thy Elohim, that's the proper translation, to the test. All right. Put not the Elohim of Israel, the most high, to the test. So we got to stop tempting the Lord when we're frustrated. We got to be mindful that we need to remain humble before him. And we can't push the Lord to do something that's not according to his word. He's not just going to bend the rules for people who are habitual um, sinners and just don't want to keep his commandments at all. He's not going to do that. Maybe for the righteous. He, he, he will do it. He will go go above and beyond for the righteous, but for, for sinners and the ungodly, they are not so. For the unredeemable who just made up their mind that they, uh, they're going to die and go to hell, you know how these people be on their deathbed, still don't want to repent, and they just close their eyes and almost instantly instantly they uh, descend down into, uh, into, into hell. Okay? But we can go on and on about the word and uh and what you know the relationship that we need to establish by the most high. But that's going to be the end of this specific series unless the Lord decides to put these uh to put this particular topic back on um on my heart or my wife's heart to expound on. But it's all according to his will. Let it not be my will, but let his will be done. As it is in heaven, it is on earth. All right, we'll pray us out. Most gracious and glorious God who are in heaven, blessed be thy name, thy sovereign king. We come to you right now just to say thank you, Lord, and show our gratitude humbly before the throne of grace according to that in which you have um, done on our behalf and the things that you are going to do, even calling us into existence so that we can be used as instruments of praise and worship and ministering spirits for um, for your glory and your good, good works. Lord, perform your greater works through us, O Lord, as spoken of by Yahweh Shai. And we, we thank you, Lord, for these minimal blessings in your mighty and powerful name. For greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. Thank you for giving us the ability um, to overcome according to your spirit and the testimony of Christ. And we bless your name. May your grace abound within us, hence now, forth, and forevermore. And may you surround us in your loving kindness and your tender mercies always. And continue to keep us unspotted and unblemished. Um, and, in, and uh, uncontaminated from the world. We love you, we worship you, and we praise you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right. All right, you all. So until next time, see you later. All right.